Welcome back to TEC Tube. We're continuing our series on economizers, and we're gonna take a dive now into the Jade Economizer controller, which is the newer style Honeywell controller that we use quite a bit for code compliance. We're gonna break that up into two videos. The first video will be on system setup, advanced setup settings, and the set points. And then the second video in that series will be for alarming, status screens, and those sorts of things. So let's dive in. Here's our Jade Economizer controller that we were working on previously. We're actually not gonna use these screens for our video today. We're gonna to use the screens on my computer. And the reason being is that this controller is actually smart enough to only show us the screens related to the options that we have wired to it. But today, for the purpose of the training video, we want you to see every single screen. So we're gonna use a simulator on my computer that shows us every single screen. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up now. So here we have our simulator. Uh, things are gonna start with a status screen, and normally that's fine for service purposes. You'd wanna start there. But when we're setting up the economizer, I don't really wanna see the status of things that I've not even configured yet. So we're gonna scroll down on here and we're gonna begin with the system setup screen. On the left-hand side, we have our escape button. On the right-hand side, we have our enter button. And then we have our up and down arrows. So everything's getting done with four buttons specifically. So if you click on enter, we're in the system setup. We can change the date of the installation. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just hit enter to change any of these values. I can go up and down to whatever the date is the month, the year, I can plug things in that way. And then when I hit enter, it'll say change stored. It's exactly how it's gonna look when I do it on the controller over here as well. So I'm gonna scroll through each of these options and explain to you what they mean. Some of them will be really easy and we can spend no time on them. So for example, if you don't know the difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius, we, we can't help you today in this video, right? Some things will be pretty easy. Equipment, the third setting option on there, my choice are conventional and heat pump. Conventional is going to be either a gas heating system or an electric heating system, whereas heat pump obviously would be a heat pump. Most systems we'll work on will be conventional for most of these rooftops in the Midwest here. The next option is auxiliary to input. So I got a few choices here. When I hit enter, I can be shut down, I can have W for heat, or I can have heat pump, heat pump with an O or a B reversing valve. The normal scenario is shut down. So if I wire something to the aux to input, such as a fire alarm system or a duct smoke detector, and it receives that input, it's going to close the economizer damper and completely shut it off. Basically disable it for fire shutdown mode. Sometimes you might have to come in and switch this to the W setting. And what that would be used for is a two speed fan system. If I have a two speed fan, I need to know whether I'm in stage one or two of cooling, whether I'm in fan only mode or whether I'm in heating mode. So this input would be my way to know if I'm in the heating mode specifically. I'm going to leave it on shutdown because that's the normal application. The next one is fan type. So I can have a one speed fan, which is normal, or if I change it to two speed fan, what would happen there is instead of one minimum position on my damper for ventilation code, I would get two minimum positions. The damper would have one position associated with the first fan airflow, another minimum position associated with the second fan airflow. So we're gonna leave that on one speed today. Uh, fan CFM, so this is a infrequently used option. You have to have a lot of different sensors installed on here, which most people don't have, including the DCV sensors on here for demand control ventilation. But if I have all those pieces of equipment on here, I'd be able to use this to uh, tell it the capacity of the fan and it would be able to track if I'm getting the right airflow for outdoor air. So that's gonna be seldom used. Auxiliary one out, I have several choices here. I have ERV, if I want to enable an ERV, I can do that. A second exhaust fan, so there's already an output for one exhaust fan. This would be if I had a second one, so a two-stage exhaust fan system associated with my economizer. Or system, SYS, that's gonna be used if I wanna have any alarms from this economizer controller from the Jade be sent out to a third party. So a BAS, a thermostat, uh, a red light bulb on the wall that flashes and blinks, whatever you want. So if I change it to system, then I'll get those alarms on that output channel. OCC is the occupancy input. So what that's going to do is allow me to take an occupancy command from a programmable thermostat or a time clock or a BAS or something like that. So if the building's occupied, the economizer controller will know that or not know that it's occupied. Uh, if we're occupied, we go to minimum ventilation position. If we're not occupied, we go fully shut. Unless, of course, I have a free cooling call. If you're not going to wire an occupancy input to this, then what you can do on these guys is you can click enter on here and instead of an input, you could change it to always. 
that basically gives it a virtual jumper. So it always assumed it's occupied. If I leave it on input, then I either need to wire a time clock to it, or I have to put a physical jumper on the terminals, one or the other. Uh, the next choice on here is uh, factory defaults. Um, so if I utilize that one, I can reset this controller back to factory defaults. If I toggle to yes and I hit enter, it wipes everything out and goes back to the beginning. It's basically my mulligan. So that is the last of our regular setup screens. If I back out one over here and I scroll down, I can go to the advanced setup. So what Honeywell does with the Jade Economizer controller, and they do it on a lot of their thermostats as well, is that they'll have the basic setup stuff, which most projects need you to have looked at and tweak a few things. Then they have the advanced setup, which for most projects you'll never have to touch. So you only go into the things you, you need normally, and if you want to tweak or optimize something, then you come into these, these advanced settings here. Today, we're gonna to go through them, just so you know what they are. So if I hit enter, I go into the very first one. The first one is MA low set. So that's mixed air temperature, low set points. The default is 45 degrees. I can make it anywhere from 35 to 65 degrees. So if the outdoor, excuse me, if the mixed air temperature gets below that number, then we're gonna go ahead and go into the freeze protection mode. And the next screen will help us define what that mode is. But this is the mixed air setting that I would have that at. 45 is a pretty good number. We're normally trying to make 53 degree economizer air. So if I get below that, then there probably is a problem with the system. If I go back one, the next one down, freeze position. If I drop below that 45 degree number or whatever number I set it for, what do I want to happen? Do I want this thing to go fully closed, the damper to go 100% shut, or do I want to go down to minimum position? By default here, it's fully closed. I can make that only go to the minimum position if I wanted to. Probably you're gonna have it in most applications be fully closed, because once again, you're only changing the advanced settings for very specific applications. The next two, CO2 zero and CO2 span, help us define what type of CO2 sensor I have. If I have the normal two to 10 volt sensor that goes from zero to, 200 par zero to 2,000 parts per million, I don't need to touch either one of these settings. But if I bought some random third party sensor, or if I had an old style one that had a different temperature, or excuse me, different CO2 curve, or different span on it, then I would change these guys. But for the normal sensor, I won't need to change either one of them. Stage three delay. As you know, as we talked about in previous videos, the, when I'm in economizer mode, the economizer is stage one. If the thermostat calls for Y2, stage two of cooling, that actually turns on compressor one. And that would normally be the end of the discussion. The J controller, however, has the ability to turn on the other compressor if need be. So I have stage one economizer, stage two is compressor one, stage three is compressor two. So I can have it do that if I want to. And this is a time delay. By default, it is two hours. It'll make me wait two hours before I go ahead and call for that extra stage. Normally, you would never need that extra stage because if it's an economizer day, if I can't get the cooling done with an economizer and one compressor, that probably means compressor one is actually broken. So the two hour delay is pretty good, but you can change it if you want to. You can make it faster, an hour and a half, an hour, half an hour, or even, a, it should be 15 minutes. And you know what? Uh, this demo doesn't go that low. I can only go down to uh, an hour or half an hour on this one, as far as I can go. And I can go up as high as four hours. The next one below that, SD damper position, shutdown damper position. If I have that fire shutdown or smoke detector input happen, what do I want it to do? Normally you want it to close the damper fully. But if for some reason you wanted to use this in a specialty application and I wanted the damper to go wide open on that input, I could change that to open if I wanted to. I'm gonna leave it at closed in our case. Uh, DCV cal enable. This will allow me to calibrate um, my demand control ventilation. So it turns on the demand control ventilation, automatic control the dampers. So it'll track itself. You have to have a return air sensor, an outside air sensor, a mixed air sensor, and a CO2 sensor, and a single speed fan in order to use this feature. So it's pretty special and you won't be using it in most applications. The next group of them I'm gonna discuss all at one time. Mixed air temperature calibration, outside, outside air humidity, return air temperature, return air humidity, discharge temperature, all those are the same thing. I'm calibrating those individual temperature or humidity sensors on this screen here. So I'm on return temperature now. I can come in here and I can add 
or I could uh, subtract off a certain amount of degrees uh, to make this guy match up with what I'm actually reading in real life. Next one after that is two speed fan delay. Five minutes is the default on there. When I get a call for high speed fan, stage two cooling, it'll delay the uh, output of the damper by this many minutes before it actually engages that particular mode. And that will conclude all of our setup screens for the Jade Economizer. Next, we'll be talking about the alarms and status type screens. The third piece of our setup is in the set section called set points. So if we come back to our controller over here, we can scroll up to set points. So we did setup, advanced setup, and now set points. So under set points, the first one we have is the mixed air temperature set point. The default is 53 degrees. That is pretty common. If I got 53 degrees in the mixed air chamber and my fan picks up a degree or two, that means I'll have 55 in the duct. And generally for most cooling applications, my goal is 55 degrees in the duct anyway. So if I set the mixed air for 53, I'm usually in pretty good shape. So that is a pretty good set point. You can tweak that if you want, anywhere from 38 to 70 degrees, but 53 or 55 would be the normal ones. The next one is low T lockout, low temperature lockout. So this set point determines the outdoor temperature when we disable mechanical cooling. So the default is 32 degrees. It's a little bit on the low side. You may want to bump that up to 45 is a pretty normal amount that we would set it for. So that's probably what I would recommend you do for most applications here. The next one is the dry bulb set point. You will only see this setting if you in fact have dry bulb control and, and no enthalpy control. The default is 63 degrees. That is also a pretty good setting. I know historically a lot of guys set it for 55. 55 is nowhere near aggressive enough schedule to get decent energy savings. 63 is actually a really good number. If you are in an area of the country with uh, 2015 energy code compliance, like we have here in Illinois, you'll need to come in and change this actually to 70 degrees as your dry bulb changeover set point. Next one will be the enthalpy curve. So the enthalpy curve you'd only see if you have the enthalpy sensors. So if you've got enthalpy sensor, you see the enthalpy set point. If you have a dry bulb sensor, you see the dry bulb set point. You normally would not see both unless you're using the simulator like I am using here. We have multiple enthalpy curves that we can pick from. There are uh, one, two, three, four, six, uh, five of them. Five enthalpy curves. See if we can bring them up on the screen here for you guys. Real quick. Not real quick, real slow. super slow. So here's our various enthalpy curves that we have available to us. Uh, ES2 is the curve that we use for code compliance, for 2015 code compliance, but you have five different co curves that you could pick from as opposed to the old school ABCD curves that you might have seen in the past. So number two curve is 75 degree changeover point with 26 enthalpy changeover. And that is a pretty normal setting that we would use for code compliance. So our next one after that one is DCV set point. The default is 1100 parts per million. If you are in the city of Chicago, you need to change this to 1000 parts per million. If you're anywhere else in the country, you're probably gonna be using the 1100 or perhaps 1200. Most places will have you do it 700 parts per million above the outdoor air level. And the outdoor air level is usually 400 or 450. So 1100 ends up being a pretty good set point. Um, after that one is the minimum position. You will only see the minimum position uh, setting on here if you do not have uh, a DCV system, so no CO2 sensor. The minimum position by default is 2.8 volts. The range of actuation is 2 to 10 volts, so 0.8 ends up being 10% of that range. So the default is 10% open. You can make that more or less by tweaking it on the voltage out to the actuator. After that, you have two settings, vent max and vent min. You will only see these if you have a CO2 sensor, but you won't see that other minimum position. It's either one set of values or the other. If I have a CO2 sensor, I have my vent max and my vent min. My vent max is my code required amount of air, right? So in this case, it'd be 10%. My vent min is the square footage portion of the code required amount of air that I would need. So that guy would typically be lowered and lower than my uh, vent max, or always be lower than my vent max. So those are the settings I have there. There's a couple more that I have that are a little bit less common. One of them is an ERV uh, OAT set point. Um, you can only utilize this if you have an ERV wired here, which you normally would not have. 
Um, but what is the temperature that you want to uh, set that ERV for to cut out? The next one is the exhaust fan one setting. If you have one speed exhaust fan, a one stage exhaust fan, what outside air damper position do you want to wait to get to before you enable that exhaust fan? The default is 50%. 40 to 60% is a pretty normal range. 50% uh, is a good choice. You're gonna probably tweak it based on what it takes to keep the doors from being you know, blown open and not being able to shut. You have a modulating damper with a one stage fan, so it's never gonna be perfect, but you gotta pick something. 50 is a pretty good starting point until you go test those front doors. Exhaust fan two set would be only if you have a two speed exhaust fan, then you would be able to set one, one speed for say 40%, the second damper position for say 60%. All right, and that will conclude all of our set points. So we did the set, the setup, the advanced setup, and the set points. And then the next video we'll talk about the status and alarming type stuff that you would see on an active project. As you can see, that's quite a bit of settings in this particular controller, way more than the typical five settings we have on most economizer controllers. So it's great because we get more flexibility, but means we have to know how this stuff actually works. So that concludes our video today. And uh, the next video in the series will be for alarming, status screens, and checkout mode.